Ethiopia has just completed one of the most ambitious engineering projects in modern African history, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, or GERD. Standing on the Blue Nile, this massive structure is not only the largest dam in Africa, but one of the largest in the entire world. It promises to reshape Ethiopia's economy, redefine regional geopolitics, and provide electricity to millions of people. But while many in Ethiopia celebrate it as a symbol of progress and national pride, the dam has also stirred controversy, sparking diplomatic disputes and raising urgent questions about water security, the environment, and the balance of power in Northeast Africa. So what exactly is the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam? Why is it so important to Ethiopia's future? And why has it become such a divisive and emotional issue across the region? Let's take a closer look. The story of the GERD begins with a vision. For decades, Ethiopian leaders dreamed of harnessing the power of the Nile to bring electricity and development to their people. Ethiopia is sometimes called the water tower of Africa, thanks to its highlands and abundant rivers. Yet, despite this natural wealth, the country has long struggled with energy shortages. Even today, millions of Ethiopians live without reliable access to electricity. The Nile itself has always been at the heart of this story. Stretching over 6,600 kilometers, it is the longest river in the world. Its two main tributaries, the White Nile and the Blue Nile, converge in Sudan before flowing north through Egypt into the Mediterranean Sea. Crucially, the Blue Nile, which begins at Lake Tana in Ethiopia, contributes the majority of the river's water. This fact has long made Ethiopia central to the Nile's future, but historically, it lacked the means to fully control or utilize it. That began to change in the early 21st century. In 2011, Ethiopia officially launched construction of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam near the Sudanese border. Originally named the Millennium Dam, it was later renamed to reflect a sense of national rebirth and pride. Built at an estimated cost of over 4 billion US dollars, financed largely without external loans or support, the GERD became not just an infrastructure project, but a symbol of sovereignty. For Ethiopia, it was proof that the nation could dream big and achieve something on its own terms. The scale of the GERD is staggering. The dam stretches nearly two kilometers in length and stands over 145 meters tall. Its reservoir, once fully filled, will cover an area of 1,874 square kilometers, more than twice the size of London. It has the capacity to store 74 billion cubic meters of water. At full operation, its hydroelectric power station is expected to generate more than 6,400 megawatts of electricity, effectively doubling Ethiopia's power capacity and making it a potential energy exporter to neighboring countries. For many Ethiopians, this is revolutionary. The dam represents the promise of reliable electricity for industries, schools, hospitals, and homes. It represents jobs, development, and modernization. It also carries deep emotional meaning, symbolizing independence and resilience. When Ethiopia announced that it would build the GERD, citizens contributed to its funding through bonds and donations. Teachers, students, farmers, and workers across the country pitched in, seeing the dam as a collective national project. But while the GERD is a source of pride in Ethiopia, it has triggered unease and sometimes outright anger in Egypt and Sudan. To understand why, we need to look at the Nile's history of politics and treaties. For centuries, Egypt has been deeply dependent on the Nile. In fact, more than 90% of Egypt's population lives along the river. Its agriculture, drinking water, and overall survival depend on its steady flow. This reliance has often made the Nile a matter of existential importance for Egypt. Historically, colonial era agreements, such as those in 1929 and 1959, gave Egypt significant control over the Nile's waters, with little consideration of upstream countries like Ethiopia. Ethiopia, which was not part of those agreements, has long rejected them. From Ethiopia's perspective, it has every right to use the Blue Nile for its development. After all, the river source is within its borders. For Egyptians, however, the GERD raised alarm bells. 
The fear is that the dam could reduce the flow of water downstream, threatening Egypt's agriculture and water security. For a country that is already one of the most water scarce in the world, this is a deeply emotional issue. Sudan's position has been more complicated. On the one hand, the GERD could bring benefits to Sudan by regulating floods and providing access to cheaper electricity. On the other hand, there are concerns about safety, water management, and dependence on Ethiopia's decisions. For Sudanese farmers who rely on predictable water cycles, the dam introduces new uncertainties. At the heart of the controversy is the process of filling and operating the dam's reservoir. Ethiopia insists that filling the GERD is essential for starting power generation and meeting its development goals. Egypt and Sudan, however, worry about how quickly this filling takes place. If too much water is retained upstream too fast, it could reduce the amount available downstream during critical periods, leading to droughts or reduced agricultural yields. Negotiations over the GERD have stretched on for more than a decade. Various rounds of talks, often mediated by the African Union, the United States, or other international actors, have sought to find a compromise. But reaching agreement has proven challenging. Ethiopia maintains that it cannot indefinitely delay the project or hand over control of its sovereign decisions. Egypt insists that its water security must be guaranteed. Sudan oscillates between cooperation and caution, depending on the shifting political climate. Despite the disagreements, Ethiopia has pressed forward. By 2020, it had begun the initial filling of the reservoir. Over the following years, additional stages of filling and power generation were completed. And now, in 2025, the dam has officially launched at full capacity. For Ethiopia, this is a triumph. For Egypt and Sudan, it is still a source of anxiety. Beyond the politics, there are also environmental and social questions. Large dams around the world often have complex consequences. On one hand, they provide renewable energy and help regulate water flow. On the other, they can displace communities, disrupt ecosystems, and alter sediment flows that sustain agriculture downstream. The GERD is no exception. Thousands of people in Ethiopia were relocated to make way for the reservoir. Environmental scientists continued to study how the dam might affect the Nile's delicate balance, from fisheries to soil fertility in the Nile Delta. Globally, the GERD has drawn attention as a case study in shared rivers and resource management. The Nile crosses multiple national borders, making cooperation essential. Yet cooperation is difficult when national interests clash so sharply. The GERD highlights both the promise and the challenge of development in a globalized, interconnected world. Still, the potential benefits are enormous. If managed well, the dam could transform Ethiopia into an energy hub for East Africa. Neighboring countries like Djibouti, Kenya, and Sudan could all benefit from access to cheaper, cleaner electricity. For a continent where energy shortages are a major barrier to growth, this could be a game changer. The GERD also fits into Ethiopia's broader vision of modernization. Addis Ababa, the capital, is already a bustling hub of African diplomacy and commerce. With new infrastructure, industrial zones, and transport projects, Ethiopia hopes to lift millions out of poverty and become a middle-income country. The dam is a central pillar of that strategy. Yet challenges remain. Political instability, regional conflicts, and economic pressures could complicate the picture. Ethiopia has faced its share of internal turmoil in recent years, including conflicts in Tigray and Amhara. Managing these tensions while pursuing ambitious development goals will require careful balance. So where does this leave Ethiopia, Egypt, and Sudan? The future of the GERD depends on diplomacy as much as engineering. For Ethiopia, the dam is a sovereign achievement and a lifeline for progress. For Egypt, it is a question of survival. For Sudan, it is both an opportunity and a risk. The hope is that the three countries can find common ground, that they can share the Nile in a way that benefits all. Looking at the bigger picture, the GERD is part of a global trend. Around the world, nations are investing in mega projects to harness rivers, build renewable energy and fuel development. From China's Three Gorges Dam to Brazil's Atapa Dam, 
These projects symbolize both the ambitions and the dilemmas of the modern age. They raise the same questions Ethiopia now faces. How do you balance development with sustainability? How do you ensure benefits are shared fairly? And how do you manage disputes that cross borders? In Ethiopia, the GERD will likely remain a symbol for generations. For many, it represents a new chapter in the nation's long history, a chapter defined by self-reliance, determination, and progress. For others, it is a reminder of the complexities that come with shared resources. As Ethiopia celebrates its new dam, the story of the Nile continues. The river has sustained civilizations for thousands of years, and it will remain central to the lives of millions in the future. The GERD is now part of that story, a story of ambition, resilience, controversy, and hope. The question is not just what the dam means for Ethiopia today, but what it will mean for the region tomorrow. Will it spark cooperation, leading to shared prosperity? Or will it deepen divisions, fueling conflict? The answer will shape not only Ethiopia's future, but the future of Northeast Africa as a whole. One thing is clear, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam has already changed the course of history on the Nile. Its impact will be felt for decades to come. Thanks for watching. Are you planning on visiting this dam?